Hi there. Today we're going to discuss in the mechanical ventilation whiteboard ventilator settings. I want to go over some basic settings. Now we've talked on the ventilator soup matrix about all the different types of modes of ventilation and today I'm going to cover how how you would set up uh, each one of these particular modes, what things you're supposed to be looking for, um, and some basic settings um, that would be appropriate. Now, in order to do this, it's, it's one thing to show you on a whiteboard. It's another thing to actually show you on an actual ventilator. And so today I'm going to take uh, a little bit of a road trip, and we're going to uh, go to a ventilator simulator uh, that's available online and uh, go through it and using, using it as an example of how you would set up a ventilator. Now, before we start, the ventilator that we're going to be using is called the Hamilton TI Transport Ventilator. And I have no relationship at all with Hamilton uh, or any, anything to do with the company. I just had heard about this simulator online. And I like the interface because of the way the screen is laid out as it clearly shows uh, some of the principles that I want to cover today. So I have no relationship with this company. I'm not advocating for its use. Um, and we will just use it as an example only. So the modes of ventilation that I want to cover today are pressure control ventilation, volume control ventilation, and pressure support ventilation. Now, in the Hamilton, the different modes actually have uh, different names, so I don't want you to get confused. Uh, the uh, pressure control ventilation is called the PCV plus uh, mode, whereas the volume control is and I don't actually even know what the S stands for, but it's CMV plus. And pressure control is called spontaneous. Okay, so why don't we just take our little trip and go and, uh, and take a look at this ventilator. So what you see on the screen now is the, uh, is the Hamilton TI T1 ventilator. And it's currently operating uh, just so that we could uh, get, get going on this quickly. In order to change the modes, I'm going to select the modes uh, button and we're going to start off with pressure control ventilation, so that's the PCV plus. We're going to confirm that. Now, this is really the heart of the matter. You can see on this, uh, just by selecting the mode, the ventilator is now asking you for a number of different settings that you can control in order to, uh, in order to start ventilation. Obviously, the most important mode or, or setting that you want to control is the pressure. So in this case, it's called pressure P control or the pressure that will be given. So this is the pressure that will be delivered to the, vent, to the patient uh, at the initiation of each breath. The uh, PEEP is also controllable. That's the uh, pressure at the end of expiration. And obviously, in order to facilitate ventilation, you want to be able to control the rate. Um, the oxygen level, again, you can set uh, is how much oxygen the patient should receive. And depending on your site or policies, you may have specific uh, guidelines for what you're supposed to set the oxygen to uh, as a baseline. The flow trigger is a slightly, uh, is the uh, uh, basic, is the, uh, is the device, is a setting that will control when the ventilator senses a breath and delivers a breath. Uh, depending on a patient's spontaneous effort. So you can see that this is a not only a time, but also a um, patient-controlled mode of ventilation. So the trigger is important because you want to be able to uh, sense when the patient is, is trying to initiate a breath. Finally, in order to control ventilation, we need to control the rate and also the through the rate, we can also control the inspiratory expiratory uh, ratio, so the IE ratio. Okay, so the alarms that are available for this mode of ventilation. Sorry, we didn't actually set that mode. Uh, pressure. Yep, pressure ventilation. Confirm. Yep, confirm. Okay, so the alarms we can set. You can see these are actually for this, I, I'm assuming for this particular uh, model of ventilation, these alarms are actually set, uh, or are actually fixed. But the most important mo uh, alarm that you need to, to watch for 
is in the case of pressure control ventilation is while you're controlling the pressure, you're not controlling the volume. And so you need to have your alarm set in a way that alerts you to a problem with the patient not receiving adequate ventilation. Because if they're not receiving adequate ventilation, and then, then they're not gonna be able to excrete their carbon dioxide load. They get hypercarbic, they get acidotic, and all kinds of unpleasant things happen. So these uh, settings, you can set the tidal volume, and this will allow you to change how, at what point in time the, the patient starts the, the alarm Will, will tell you that the patient is not ventilating sufficiently enough. So you don't want to have your tidal volume alarm set too high because it won't, alarm, it won't alert you to a problem unless, uh, unless the patient's uh, tidal volumes are, are, um, uh, are fall, fall too high outside the upper range or too below the lower range. Uh, the respiratory rate. Uh, again, you've already got that under control. This is probably built in. The expiratory minute ventilation, which is the one that is currently alarming, is the combination of the minute ventilation is the tidal volume and the frequency. So you can change the number of liters per minute that the um, uh, that this uh, ventilator is set to uh, by adjusting this up or down. Uh, and then if the patient is alarming, the high minute volume, you can adjust either in the case of pressure control ventilation, you can either control, drop the pressure control so the patient gets less pressure with each breath and then therefore would eventually receive less tidal volume, or you can adjust the rate and change the minute ventilation that way. Thusly. Now see that alarm just shut off because it now, now we're back within range. So that's pressure control ventilation. Next, we're gonna talk about volume control ventilation. So to set volume control, I'm gonna switch to this SCMV uh, plus mode. Um, and you can see that this, a lot of the, the same basic settings are still, uh, are still there. You have your rate, you have your IE ratio, you have your flow trigger, you have your oxygen level, you have your PEEP, but now you have your tidal volume. Because with volume control ventilation, that's the, volume, uh, that's the parameter that, is, most, that, that is, is of most interest and therefore being controlled. So you can set, oh, sorry, uh, I didn't set that mode, so let me just get that set properly. Uh, SCMV, confirm confirm that and then jump back to the controls. Okay, so you can see that we can set the volume for a volume control mode however we want. Uh, again, the same principles apply. Minute ventilation is rate times uh, tidal volume um, and you control expired, you, you control ex uh, uh, vent, um, the uh, inspiratory expiratory ratio with the IE ratio here uh, and the flow ratio. Now, going to the alarms, Again, the issues, the same alarms are present as you saw in the previous one. Um, but this time, the, the alarm setting that you need to pay particular attention to is the pressure. And because you, you're controlling the volume, you're not, you're not watching for what the pressure is. So if you have too high of a volume, so let's say, for example, in this case, we really crank up the volume. Ooh, we're just out of control. Now this lung is obviously very compliant because at that kind of a tidal volume, you would start to expect some serious problems with the pressure. So let's make this patient a little bit more uh, non-compliant. And see what happens here. Okay. So we're not seeing any changes here. And this may be a consequence of the ventilator, but the principle remains. When you change your tidal volume, you have to watch, watch your pressure because that's the, that's the, the um, 
uh, that's the, s the setting that you're not controlling for and you have to watch for that uh, very closely. Um, so make sure that you've got this set appropriately so that you don't over, don't create a problem with um, barotrauma in the patient. Okay. Lastly, we're going to talk about pressure support ventilation, and that in this case is the spontaneous mode uh, in the setting. Now, the, the settings are different than for the other modes because there's obviously a factor you can't control for. Uh, you can't control the volume uh, that's being delivered, but you can control the amount of support you're going to provide the patient by setting the pressure support level that you're going to set, as well as the PEEP level. The flow trigger is the same thing. It's the uh, same principle. It's what tells you that the patient's trying to initiate the breath, and then the oxygen concentrations. Now, whoops, that's uh, control, let's get those set. Confirm, confirm, alarms. Same alarms apply as they apply to the, um, to all the other settings, but the section that I want you to pay particular attention to is the apnea alarm. Now, apnea alarm means that the ventilator is actually not just a, not just going to be a dumb bellows on a uh, with a timer and just deliver a breath whenever the patient asks for it. It's actually going to be paying attention. If the patient's not taking in a breath, there needs to be a safety backup that allows some form of ventilation to occur while it's also alerting you to a potential problem with the patient. So, for example, if you had a patient who was um, uh, on a spontaneous mode of ventilation and then you gave them a big whack of sedation, suddenly they're not inclined to breathe anymore, you want to make sure your ventilator is going to alert you to the fact that you need to change the mode to give them some form of controlled breath so that they don't get uh, hypercarbic on you. So we'll go to the mode, apnea alarm. So this is set to automatic, so I'm just going to flip this over. Most ventilators will have a basic uh, backup mode in this case, they said that the, they'll, they have a setup as a backup is the SNV mode, where in which you can control the rate and the tidal volumes and the IE ratio very basically. But again, this is not, you're not setting this because the patient actually requires this. This is your backup in the case of trouble. But more importantly, it starts to alarm you to tell you that the patient is apneic and kick into backup mode of ventilation. Let's see if we can get that to do that. Low minute ventilation. Okay, well. Okay, well, it may not do that, but that's not the point of this. So, essentially, nope, there you go. The apnea alarm is now starting to kick in. I've just got the alarm silenced, so you can't hear it buzzing off. So, again, going over the basic settings with pressure control ventilation. The primary setting that you need to control is the pressure, obviously. You need to have your rate as well as your IE ratio to help dis determine your IE ratio. Uh, so your minute ventilation, your PEEP, and your oxygen concentrations um, control your oxygen levels. Your alarms, again, you're going to want to focus on your tidal volume because that's the, uh, that's, the, that's, the sec that's the setting that you're not controlling for anymore. <laughs> Switching over to SIMV or sorry, yes, I mean the um, uh, uh, volume control, you can see that the main mode that is controlled is the tidal volume, but then when you do that, you need to keep a close eye on your pressure to make sure you're not causing uh, barrel trauma. And with spontaneous mode, you don't have control over the, over the tidal volume. All you control is the amount of s extra pressure that is supported when the patient vent initiates the breath. So again, your flow trigger is kind of an important uh, setting at this point, but also your backup ventilation in the case the patient decides not to breathe on their own. And that's really all there is to it um, for a basic setup of, uh, of mechanical ventilation. Um, obviously, it's more important that then you take this section and actually practice it at the bedside um, and understand your ventilator because ventilators, as you see, have different uh, settings, or sorry, have different names for their settings, and so you have to be certain that you're familiar with what you're using. 
um, prior to um, uh, prior to actually putting a patient on it. But the essentials are, uh, largely don't change and then you need to make sure that you know what your basic settings are and what your alarm settings are going to be. Um, and when you're breathing on a spontaneous mode, uh, make sure you have some form of apnea as a backup alarm so the patient doesn't, uh, doesn't become uh, hypercarbic accidentally.